what if is a really dangerous question, and it can be very seductive as well. You might ask it about fiction. What if Captain America was someone else? What if Spider-Man lived in the year 2099? What if William Shakespeare wrote The Taming of the Shrew set in a modern day high school? Uh, all of those are stories that have been written and have had movies made about them even. Uh, there are other what ifs though. You might look at uh, history. What if Rome never fell? What if the Confederacy won the Civil War? What if we lost World War II? There are some fun what if stories that can be told there. And again, there have been movies and TV shows and books written about all of those. But maybe the most dangerous what if is the, the personal ones. What if I had asked her out? What if I hadn't kept doing that stupid thing? What if I had actually chased my dream? See, the danger of what if is that you get lost in that what if and you think, well, maybe that would have been better. Maybe I'm stuck someplace that's worse. And we're going to ask that dangerous question this Lent. We're going to ask, every week, we're going to ask a different what if question about the Bible. And today we're asking, what if Jesus sinned? Before we get to the what if, we do have to know what actually happened. Jesus was here to fight, to battle Satan for you. And he went to war with Satan, and Satan went to war with Jesus. And Satan went all out. He didn't hold back any weapons. He threw everything he had at Jesus, every single temptation, all of them, to get Jesus to mess up even just once. And Jesus stood firm. He never gave in to a single temptation. And what that means for you is that there is a throne of grace. That Jesus took your place, he was your perfect substitute, and now you have a place that you can go. But what if? What if Jesus sinned? The sun beat down on the Son of God. The heat was unbearable. Sweat dripped off of his face. He hadn't eaten in weeks. His entire body was rebelling against him. But this was part of the discipline that he was going under. His father said, trust me, this is what is best. And in that weakened state, in that torture, Satan came to Jesus and said, what are you doing? You're the son of God, right? Why, why do you need to suffer? Just, just tell the stones to become bread. I know you've got the power. Just do it and eat. Why, why should you suffer? I know that you're here to fight me, to take the world. And you know what? I'll give you the world. You can have it. Just bow down and worship me. That's all it's going to take. You know these people, they're going to reject you. Why not put on a show so that they know that you're someone special? Here, top of the temple, you jump down, everyone's going to see you. And you know what the Bible promises, that, that the angels will catch you, you won't even strike your foot against a stone. I'm just trying to help you. And Jesus heard all the temptations. And his stomach hurt so much. And he looked over at one of the stones and said, become bread. And the stone listened to its creator. And Jesus devoured that new loaf of bread. It might seem so little, but at that moment, Jesus didn't trust his father. Jesus broke the first commandment. You shall have no other gods. What does this mean? We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. That means at that moment there was a sundering of the Godhead. That the Trinity itself went to war with each other. The Son and the Father were no longer one. Reality itself shook. But it was even worse than that. Jesus came to be your Savior. And now he needed saving himself. Trusting him would be as good as trusting me. I can't save you from your sins. I need a savior too. And now Jesus did too. And that means when Jesus died on the cross, it meant nothing. 
It meant that one more person died a terrible, horrible death. And at the end of time, when the sky rips open and judgment comes for you, you couldn't hide behind Jesus. You would be judged on what you have done. And you would be judged guilty. Damned. Forever in the lake of fire. That's what would happen if Jesus sinned. Not just a world that's a little bit different and interesting, but a world where there is no hope. A world where there is no salvation. Where there's a throne of understanding, Jesus could say, oh yeah, I get sin, but no grace. He wouldn't be able to give it to you. Thank God that's not what happened. Thank God that that's a what if, that that's not reality. In reality, Satan and Jesus battled, and Jesus won. He won that battle, and that means some amazing things for you. Our second lesson, Hebrews said that he was tempted in every way, just as we are. And what that means is that whatever your temptation is, the temptations that the people around you know because they're really public, and the temptations that no one knows because you've kept it secret, Jesus has faced those temptations. He actually wrestled with that exact same temptation so that when you sin, Jesus can look at you and say, I get it. I know how tempting that can be, no matter what it is. I get it. But because he didn't give in to that temptation, he's your perfect substitute. He can appear in your place and say, yeah, that temptation, I stood up to it and I won, and I give you that record. What that means is that no matter what the temptation is, no matter what you've given into, you are forgiven. Because Jesus fought that temptation too. That's pretty amazing. And that means that there is a throne of grace for you. That no matter what it is that you have faced, Jesus says, come on. You're welcome here. You're forgiven for that too. Come on in. What that means, too, is for you that because you're forgiven, you can fight that temptation, too. Jesus showed how we can fight it by being in touch with God's word and knowing his grace so that you're strengthened to fight. See, the what if, it might make a really good question. And we're going to ask a whole bunch of them. But in the end, what we're going to see every time is that the world that God has given us is the best world. What if Jesus sinned? Be terrible. But Jesus didn't sin. Which means you are forgiven for that sin too. Amen. Now the peace of God that is better than anything we can understand will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord until he returns to bring us home to life everlasting. Amen. Let's stand and join together in singing the Create in Me.